The last speaker in the first group is Lon Lowen of Arbor Networks, who's going to talk about guarding the global internet. Lon has worked in data networking and internet technologies for over 20 years, is responsible for driving engineering initiatives for Arbor SP product portfolio used by 90% of global internet service providers. So welcome, Lon, to the stage, who is a great partner at Spark, and I want to thank him for that. Great. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. So uh, I'm Lon Lowen from Arbor Networks, and uh, as Paul said, we're going to talk about guarding the global internet, but we do it from right down the street. So who is Arbor Networks? Uh, we've been around for about 17 years. We're a local tech company. Uh, we have approximately 160 employees here in Ann Arbor. Uh, we have about 550 employees globally. And we do the majority of our business overseas, about 55% of our business. We got our start as a collaboration between the University of Michigan and DARPA. DARPA is the defense, it's kind of a mouthful, is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And this is a government agency that's been around for, I believe, about 60 years. And they've been responsible for many of the innovations that we use today. And in fact, there's a fairly well-known publication that talks about the 10 most brilliant DARPA inventions. Okay. And I put several of them on this list. And you know, one of them, the first one on the list you've probably heard of, which is the internet. Uh, you've probably heard about ARPANET. Uh, this was the formation uh, from a, one of the inventions from DARPA. I put some other ones here as well that you've probably heard of. Google Maps, uh, Unix, GPS, Siri. One of them you probably haven't heard about is the Lighthouse Project. And we're pretty proud of that, because what the Lighthouse Project is, is that's eighth on the list, and that was the code name for the creation of Arbor Networks as a grant to help solve DDoS problems in the global internet. So what does Arbor do? We're going to talk about two use cases. We do a lot more than just these two, but these are the ones we're going to cover today. Global network visibility. As Paul mentioned, we have our products and our solutions in over 90% of all of the tier one large global internet companies. These are the big organizations, big companies like AT&T and Verizon are probably the most well-known. And what they use our hardware and software for is they have these big routers, right? These big devices that sit in their core networks. And these are in these big buildings that don't have any windows. Uh, you can call them many names. Uh, for those who've worked in the industry, they might be considered a pop or like a, like a telco slick. Well, we have our hardware and software that receives information from, again, these large core routers that sit in the core networks across the entire global internet. And we receive information like NetFlow and Border Gateway Protocol, which are information that is sent from these devices. We collect that, and when we gather all of this data from these large internet companies, we allow them to solve some problems that are important to all of us in this room. This is so we can get to things like Amazon, uh, Netflix, uh, make sure that it works properly. So they use our software in their core networks to help load balance, to make sure there's not latency problems, and that where traffic is being used across the network is performing properly. What Arbor is predominantly known for is DDoS. I'm going to define this here to make sure that we're clear. DDoS is distributed denial of service, and it's an attack or an attempt to attack, essentially to exhaust resources on network devices, applications, or services out in the global internet. So genuine users, like you or me, unless there's bad people in the audience, so essentially you can get to the services that you want to get to. I'm gonna call them bad guys, for lack of a better term. There are bad guys out there that write software. You've probably heard of viruses, you may have heard of malware and botnets, but these bad guys write software that lives on personal computers. It could live on Internet of Things devices, such as wireless cameras, but this software is designed to work in conjunction with millions of other PCs and devices that are talking to a command and control server that essentially tell this software, hey, we're going to launch a large-scale coordinated attack to one specific target destination, essentially either like a website or DNS infrastructure that these bad guys want to take completely offline. And there's tools that you can go download to launch your own DDoS attack. I don't encourage you to go download these, by the way, but you can go look for them, and people can launch their own DDoS attacks. And these attacks can be huge. Last year, the largest attack was a 800 gigabit per second 
attack in 2016. So to put that in perspective, a well-connected, large financial institution, like a large bank, they may have a 10 gigabit per second connection that brings all of their data pipes into, say, their web server farm or all of their infrastructure. If there were these coordinated attacks with botnet and malware that were sending traffic all at the exact same time of 800 gigs, it would completely overwhelm their entire infrastructure. And that's true with even 300 gigs and, and, and even like, a, like 100 gigs. So why attack? Why are there these bad people out there who are writing software to take down global infrastructure? The motivations may vary, uh, but in, in order, uh, really the main thing uh, that we do a lot of business trying to protect are online gaming sites. Uh, these are sites like, uh, for example, Sony PlayStation, I believe it was around Christmas time of 2014, there was a lot of really sad kids on Christmas Day. Uh, Sony PlayStation Network uh, and a few others, they were offline for a period of time due to a large-scale DDoS attack. Motivations for that can be uh, online gaming players who have been kicked off the servers and they're frustrated and they want to launch an attack. Political and ideological. It is surprising how much is going on behind the scenes that most people don't know about. You have governments launching attacks trying to take down other governments or trying to take down infrastructure. Criminal extortions. This is where you have, again, these bad guys who are launching these attacks at a target destination, and they may launch it for, say, a half hour. They'll stop the attack, contact the organization, and say, hey, pay us some money or we're going to relaunch this attack. There's also competitive reasons. You don't see much of this in the United States, but you also have companies who hire these bad guys again to launch attacks to their competition. So how do we solve it? This is where Arbor comes in. So let's go back to the network visibility. If we have the visibility into all of the, the, the traffic across the internet, uh, again, the 90% of traffic, we can start to build heuristics around well, what does good look like? If you see traffic patterns, you can start to build a pattern around this looks like a DDoS attack. If these anomalies, these DDoS attacks are detected, all of that target traffic, instead of it going to the actual target destination that's under attack, it actually goes to Arbor equipment that sits right next to those core routers in those buildings that don't have any windows. We analyze all of that traffic, we look at the packets, we drop that bad traffic, and then the good traffic is able to continue on to the intended destination. This is fake news. You probably did not read about Brazil's financial markets crashing during the summer games. In Rio, up until the summer games that occurred last year, there was actually a very significant amount of DDoS activity with these bad guys trying to take down the infrastructure uh, in, uh, in Rio. This is a representation of the traffic patterns up to the games, and then during the actual games in Rio, there was an approximately two-week sustained attack of traffic of 500 gigs. However, you didn't hear about it because the government of Brazil and the internet service providers were prepared for this because they wanted to make sure, obviously, that the games was going to be successful for the athletes and people who wanted to stream video. So you never read about it. This is another one. This is, this is fake news. This didn't happen. It did happen, but it didn't happen. A small Western African country disconnected from the world. Well, what actually happened is there was a small Western African country in October of 2016. They were hit with a massive DDoS attack. But they were prepared for it, and they were able to block it and defend it, so it didn't make the news. Keep calm. Nothing happened. So some takeaways. Um, before I actually jump into that, I do want to cover really briefly about what do we look for? Because I, I get this question a lot, and there's interest in security. There's a lot of security in Ann Arbor, which is fantastic. Well, if we're looking to hire someone, what do we look for? Linux, C, Python, if anyone in the room, you're, you're thinking, hey, I got some skills around that. Networking, TCP IP, security. If you're in school, if you're a student, you're looking at internships, things we look for is tech projects that you've done outside of school, volunteer activities are, are important to us, collaboration, how much do you work with other people? Uh, and no jerks, and what I mean by that is uh, we don't care how good you are technically, uh, we want people who uh, are there to, to work well with other people. So the last thing is, we're the folks 
guarding the global internet. We have traffic visibility. We can see the traffic patterns across the entire internet. We make sure that banks and gaming sites and retail and governments are online and they stay online. And we do that from right down the street. Thank you. I got, I got to love that, yeah. uh, that Twitter handle. Um, what's the best way an individual can protect themselves and others from attacks? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So um, one of the attacks that was launched uh, recently was called the Mirai attack. And uh, this, this was an attack that involved, it was over a million devices in the global internet. What we learned is the predominant devices that were launching this attack that had that malware and botnet on it was on internet cameras. These were on IoT devices, internet connected cameras. What the, what the bad guys who write this software, what they've been using is the default login to many devices. It can be, again, like those cameras, it can be uh, routers uh, that you have. In fact, uh, as an example, I, I just installed the garage door in my house and it actually has an internet, it has wireless on it. So um, <laughs> I changed the password. So um, really the best thing that you can do at home is, is really change your default passwords because we're seeing more and more of the attacks are not being launched from the typical PCs. Uh, PCs are, are certainly widely used, but obviously there's cell phones, there's your iPads and other laptops. Change your passwords, probably the most important thing. Cool. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.